Hey guys, what is going on? <laughs> All right. Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God video. The recording crashed on me, so I gotta redo this intro bit. I love technology. So in my last main video, I gave my thoughts on the newly introduced dungeon and content, The Lost Halls, but I refrained from talking about any of the items because there was a lot to talk about. However, I have taken a look at every individual item that this new dungeon drops, and I want to give my assessment on them. Hmm, sounds like fun. <laughs> Could I join? No. All right, so first up is the only non-Lost Halls UT, which is the Cloak of Bloody Surprises that drops from the Lost Century, which has now become one of my new favorite event gods. He's so cool and fun and dying. Its mana cost is 95, which is 10 more than the Tier 5 and Tier 6, and the invisibility is a whole second less at 4.5, with a 6 second cooldown, meaning you will have to wait 1.5 seconds before activating successive cloaks, even if you have the mana. But this is all done in an effort to balance out the cloak, because in exchange, your character then becomes slowed for 3 seconds, which is still bad, but it also receives damaging for 3.5 seconds. Now let's think about that for a moment. The rogue is known as the solo class of Realm of the Mad God. It can do anything by itself, given a enough time because it can go invisible and it's really fast. Inflicting slow upon yourself completely defeats the purpose of being a rogue because now your speed is gone. Meaning that this is not a rushing cloak. The Cloak of Bloody Surprises is made exclusively for situational combat. When you've already rushed the dungeon and made it to the boss, go invisible and double your damage to kill the boss that much quicker. Since you're already invisible, you don't have to worry about the boss trying to attack you, therefore you don't need any speed to evade attacks. And the two deaf and two vid is pretty nice also. Overall, it's a really solid item. It's not the go-to cloak by any means, but as a UT item, it doesn't need to be. The purpose of UTs isn't for them to be the default weapon of choice. It's to give you an advantage in particular situations. G-Cookie is an overall more versatile seal than Oreo, but Oreo gives you invincibility, which in short bursts is really effective. It's not a more universal item than G-Cookie, but it has moments where it's better, and that's what the Cloak of Bloody Surprises is. There are times where you will want to use it more than the other cloaks, but not all the time. Moving on into the Lost Halls itself, we have a lot. The simplest of additions are the new Tier 13 weapons and Tier 14 armors, which are all just a little bit better than their previous tiers. Unlike Wine Cellar Tops, though, they are soulbound from what I've read, which I assume was done to make them more rare, or for duping. Is that still around? And yes, that does mean that we now have a Tier 13 dagger. Kill me. There are a couple of miscellaneous consumable items that drop, one of which being gravel, which can be used to stasis things around you, and the Vial of Darkness, dropping from Malice, the leader of the cultist hideout. And that is used to get into the void. Moving on to the first of the rare drops, we have the Marble Colossus set, starting with the Sword of the Colossus. And its base damage is more powerful than all of the other tiered swords, not to mention a whopping 4.5 range like a sea sword. And from what I can see, the rate of fire is unaffected, most likely giving it more DPS than an ancient stone sword. Demon Blade and Pixie Sword still have more damage, assuming you're getting all of your shots in, but the base damage here is still extraordinary. To counterbalance this high damage, the projectiles move outward in a wave-like pattern, similar to the Staff of Esbin, making it pretty tough to land your attacks. But if you do manage to land them, you're doing insane damage. And for the skilled players who get accustomed to this awkward firing pattern, the Sword of the Colossus is the better weapon. Next up is the Marble Seal, usable by, of course, only the Paladin. And this one's really cool. The mana cost is a bit much at 135, but what's really unique about this seal is that it spawns a marble pillar for 4.5 seconds and giving everybody within three tiles an armor and damaging buff. It's like a combination of a jugged warrior only instead of going berserk you get damaging and it's also a party effect. So it's great for crowds specifically in the lost halls I wonder why. And it also gives you plus five defense which is great for the paladin because it already maxes at 30 so this pushes it up to 35. Combine that with an acropolis armor that's almost 60 defense. Assuming you use an acropolis armor because the breastplate of new life, the heavy armor portion of the set, only gives you 12 defense. That's lower than a tier 13 robe, but in return, you receive 160 health, almost the equivalent of an unbound HP ring or a Decker Being ring. A and for anyone who doesn't know me, leave. I will always sacrifice some defense, in this case, a little more than I'm comfortable with, for a large amount of HP. Yes, we are losing 12, 13 defense here compared to what we would normally be using, but 160 is a huge chunk of health, and I think that that can do a slightly better job at keeping you alive most of the time. And that's why the Marble Seal gives you plus five defense, to make up for this deficit. The Magical Lodestone, the accessory item of the set, does its best to try and make the Paladin tanky again, with five defense and five speed to help you move around quickly, but it also provides you five attack and dexterity as a means of buffing 
using your DPS. It looks pretty balanced on paper, and that 1000 feed power doesn't lie. But realistically, there isn't much of a reason to use this over something like the Crown of the Forgotten King, even a Ring of the Pyramid, which... Actually, wait, why, why does Ring of the Pyramid have more feed than a crown? Isn't a crown just a, a, a better pyramid? Why does it- In the case of crown, you're getting 6 attack and 6 dexterity, which is one more of each stat than what lodestone gives you. And the 110 HP from crown is, to me, a more effective defensive stat than 5 defense. The only big reason that you would want to use this item over something like a crown, one, to complete the set, or for that speed buff. That's really it. Overall though, as a set, these are all really good items. Lodestone might not be anything remarkable, but the sword is unique, the seal is definitely unique, and the breastplate is just all around sweet. Really want to get my hands on this stuff. Continuing on, we have the Void Archer set, all dropping from the Void Entity. Starting with the Bow of the Void, this is essentially a weaker but faster Doom Bow. Its damage is almost the exact same as a point-blank Covert Shot, but because there's only one shot to deal with here, like with Doom Bow, you don't have to sit uncomfortably close to an enemy to land all of your shots, like with a Covert. You can stand back at a shorter than average but still comfortable 6.2 range. From what I've seen, the projectiles do also have a funky wave-like pattern to them, making it a little bit hard to aim, and I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like the projectile speed is a little slower, just by one tile, but the shots still hit multiple targets and it does a lot of damage, it's a good bow. But then there's the Quiver of the Shadows, and this is not messing around. The mana cost is 15 more than average at 90, the individual shots deal an average damage of 225, which is almost 100 less than an Elvish, and it has 5 less range, but you have a whopping 5 shots to collide with enemies. The base damage for one shot may be less than Elvish, but when all shots are combined, it's easily over 1000. Not to mention, it still pierces, and it ignores the defense of enemies. And that, my friends, is why this quiver has no status effect. And I really hope I can score one in the future. Then there's the Armor of Nil, a leather armor that gives you 21 defense, the most of any leather armor, but minus 2 speed and minus 2 dex. So if you're using the quiver and the armor in the same set, you're now losing 4 speed. Not a huge deal, really, but around 4 or 5 speed, you do start to feel the effects. You feel like a slightly slower character, but it's very subtle. This really comes down to how survivable you are. Do you want the comfort of having 21 defense, which is 4 more than Hydra, or are you comfortable with having 18 and less defense? In the end, it's a case of the candy-coated armor. Do you want to have a lot of defense at the cost of another stat? You decide. The Source Stone is the Void's version of the Lodestone, only instead of trying to balance out DPS with defense, it opts for a more health and mana-driven character. It gives you 80 health, 80 mana, and 4 speed. Very comparable to the Nile, which gives you 60 health, 60 mana, and 4 speed, plus 4 dex, making the only reason that you would choose Source Stone over something like a Nile is the 4 dex and slightly higher health and mana. Between the two, I would say that Source Stone is slightly more of a survivable item than Lodestone. But now we have my personal favorite, the Cultist Necromancer set. The Staff of Unholy Sacrifice, it's unlike anything you've ever seen in the game before. It has 4 shots, a much higher DPS than all of the other tiered staves, the ability to pierce their enemies all with the repercussion of shooting backwards. Yeah, you have to point behind you to shoot it forwards. I gotta tell you, DECA is getting crazy with their shot patterns. They probably just had a meeting and said, you know what, we're gonna make some crazy overpowered items, but make them really weird to use. And it even has 8 range, which is really close to a regular staff. But its rate of fire has been cut down to 50%, similar to EP, which makes sense, but still, really good. The Skull of Corrupted Souls continues the trend of awesomeness, and at first glance it might not seem that great. Statistically, it is much weaker than the other skulls, less range, less damage, but also less mana, allowing it to be used a little more frequently than other skulls. It also ignores 40 defense of enemies, which is cool. It curses enemies for 4 seconds, gives you 66 health and 6 vitality, the joke writes itself, and I'm sure it was intentional, and apparently it's going to be subject to Wizmod, which is great because the Necromancer already has 75 wisdom, its robe will give it more, it's... Ah, oh, yeah. Complementing that is the Ritual Robe, giving you 40 MP, 5 attack, 10 defense, and 12 wisdom. So it's a little bit less MP and defense than a Grand Sorcerer, but one more attack and double the amount of wisdom, which again, will coincide very well with the possible Wiz mod. So good! Man, the Bloodshed Ring is... That's pretty good. 80 health, 5 defense, 5 wisdom. Improves the whiz mod a little bit, makes up for the ritual robe not giving you that much defense, and gives you more health, which goes great with the staff. This is an awesome set. I really like seeing the necromancer get treated better. And finally, we have the golem set, where all four pieces actually drop from a different enemy. The carved golem remains dagger is pretty much the sea sword equivalent of a dagger. Its DPS is very comparable to a tier 9 rage talon, but you have 6.3 range, which is a good deal higher than 5.6. The brain of the golem prism, though, is pretty cool. I really like that. 
that name. First of all, its MP cost is the same as a tier 1, allowing it to be spammed pretty frequently. It lasts for 6 seconds. However, instead of teleporting you to a location, this prism is solely decoy based. When you use this ability, a golem decoy will be spawned at that point, and it will not move at all. Which may sound like a negative for some people, but I'm the complete opposite. Typically decoys move in whatever direction you were moving previous to the teleport. Here, you can plant the decoy exactly where you want it to be. Unfortunately, it does give you minus two attack and minus two dexterity, but this is a cool item. The Golem Garments Armor gives you 14 defense, which is oddly low, but four attack and seven vitality, as a means of making up for the two attack and dexterity that we lost before. And then our accessory item is the Rusty Cuffs, giving you 40 health, five defense, five speed, five Five vitality. I guess the five vitality here combined with the seven from the armor would be somewhat beneficial, but I can't see myself using this very often. But last but not least, we have the Omnipotence Ring dropping from the Void Entity. And I wouldn't have it any other way because this is a great ring. 60 health and mana, so it's already on par with a Bracer and Nile. Gives you three attack, defense, speed, dex, vit, whiz, all of the stats. Pretty much a better amulet. Plus, I really like the sprite. Probably my most anticipated item in this video. Okay, so that wraps up all of the items you can get in the Lost Halls. I hope that this was entertaining to people who just wanted to hear what I had to say, and maybe even helpful for players who didn't quite understand what these items did or how good they actually were. And above all, I hope you had a good time. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. All right. See ya.